Well, this has been going on for months now, and for the past week or so, we've been in a holding pattern as to what will or won't happen with the 49ers and receiver Brandon Ayuk. Quick background, he's in the final year of his rookie contract, fifth-year option of $14.1 million, not nearly enough to placate a guy who was a second-team All-Pro last year, not Pro Bowler, second-team All-Pro, 1,342 receiving yards, led the league for starters in yards per target at 12.7 high-end potential 49ers haven't wanted to pay him what he's been looking to get other teams willing to do it so yesterday yesterday the first development was Steelers and 49ers finally have a deal in place for Brandon Ayuk and then when it felt like it was just a matter of time before both teams turned the key Both teams communicate the terms to the league. The trade is done. Then we hear, not surprisingly, the 49ers have finally realized maybe we should just pay him what the Steelers are going to pay him and keep him. And hey, you know, as the saying goes, and I'm probably going to butcher it, but wisdom often never arrives, arrives at all. We shouldn't complain that it shows up late. Maybe this is what the 49ers needed to finally come to the conclusion We should just pay this guy. Yeah, we wanted to keep him for one more year at 14.1, but all these other teams are willing to pay him, but we're not willing to pay him. Maybe we should be willing to pay him what these other teams are willing to pay him and make him co-number one with Debo Samuel on the way to being number one as soon as next year. Yeah, listen, I I hear you. Obviously, something happened there, right? I I think that it's, it's... the Steelers, the 49ers have been in conversations, right? They're, 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 I think that's why Ayuk has forced it there. He knows that they were willing to give him a contract close to what he wanted, right? To me, it's not about that. It's about something we talked about earlier this week, right? It's the fact of, okay, yeah, the 49ers trade Brandon Ayuk to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, now wait, they're a Super Bowl team. What the hell are they going to do at receiver? Like that's where, and knowing my buddy Kyle Shanahan, which I think I know him pretty well, right? I think he's going, wait, I'll trade Brandon Ayuk. That's great. But we got to find somewhere else where I'm going to have a receiver because I don't want to start Ricky Pearsall in week one against Sauce Gardner and, and have him have to not only deal with that, but think about my offense and all of that. Like we talked about a little bit on Monday. So I think that's where he's going, wait, I'm not going to give away a really damn good receiver and not get one back right now. And like knowing my friend Shanahan and John Lynch too, they're going, wait, we're, we're a Super Bowl team. We just talked about it, you and I. So they think that they're going to go, well, we got to get something else here in return that can fill that void of Brandon Ayuk not being there. I would think that's what's wait, putting the foot on the brakes and going, er, hold on. Yeah, maybe we wanted to trade him and not pay him, but like, you know, trading him, not paying him, and then not having anybody to fill the void, and then us not going to the Super Bowl because of it, I that's not cool. And I bet you that's where they've had some meetings here lately where they probably talked about it and went, maybe we we're just better off paying him and keeping him, and maybe we can still win the Super Bowl that way. I, I would imagine those are the conversations that are going down there in San Francisco. And ultimately you got to get the owner to sign off on it. And it may be that they knew all along this is what it's going to take. It was a process to get Nick Bosa signed. It was a process to get Debo Samuel signed. And maybe deep down, Kyle and John Lynch knew that Jed York isn't going to give the thumbs up until he personally witnesses the dominoes fall and then realizes this is the only way. And then they can go to him and make the case, hey, Jed, here's what we got, right? Patriots would have sent us back Kendrick Bourne. That would have helped replace Brandon Ayuk. He don't want to go there. We can't do that deal. Browns would have sent us Amari Cooper. That would have helped replace Brandon Ayuk. He doesn't want to go there. Yeah, can't do that deal. Exactly. Steelers aren't offering us anything. We've scoured the league for other trades we could make. We That's could take right. the assets we get from the Steelers and flip them to someone else right. and get a receiver. There's nobody out there that we feel comfortable plugging and playing in this offense. I mean, the best they could do is Robbie Chosen. Because he knows the offense from last year in Miami. That's it. And Shanahan went on and on about the guy. And look, this isn't 2019 anymore. The world changes. Robbie Anderson, which is the name you went by at the time, you know, he had a thousand yard season in 2020, I believe, with the Jets or the Panthers. I think it was the Panthers by then. But he has not done much since then. 
And this is the guy Shanahan was selling to the world a couple of days ago. They realized if we send Ayuk to Pittsburgh, we are not going to be able to just open another door and a great receiver is going to waltz through it. That's right. So we didn't want to do it. And we said we weren't going to do it. And, you know, maybe in some fit of temper or frustration or just I'm in charge, I run the show, you can't fire the owner of the team, something Jed York once said. Maybe he drew a line that he was never going to cross, and it took five, six months and a variety of different developments for him to realize, I probably need to cross that line. Yeah, may, maybe. You know, I, I listen, we, we know that that can happen, and they can get involved in those conversations there. Right. I'd be I'd be I know everybody thinks I always know what's going on in San Francisco. Like people are crazy. If you think I know what's going on in this situation, totally. I'm doing my best to tell you what I think is going on because I follow them closely and I know those guys out there real well. But I got no idea. But knowing them a little bit, too, you know, I think you said some right things there, too. And I think the 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 maybe the the brakes were hit here a little bit because of like one thing you referred to wait yeah we'll trade Brandon Ayuk okay wait you're gonna give us this back and now we got to make a move to get a receiver somewhere else in the league they're not finding that right I think that's one one possible scenario to your point they're not finding that team to go wait okay wait we got some of these assets from the trade can you give us a receiver we'll give you this blah 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 I would think that's part of maybe it or the fact that maybe the Steelers are not offering enough. Uh, th- that could be it, too. The 49ers could be just looking at it and go, wait, he's second team all pro. He was a first-round pick. He's he's damn good. We might not want to pay him superstar good, but he's damn good, and we're not just going to give him away as being a Super Bowl team. And then I think when you add on top of that the fact that I think you know, I know, everybody knows, the only position we've been talking about with the Steelers that they really need this whole offseason – is another receiver. They're a little desperate, you know? So that's where I don't know where the report came from, how it came out, whatever, right? But either way, I could see that being a part of the the problem as well. The 49ers going, wait, you guys, you, you guys, oh, you think you're going to the playoffs, maybe the Super Bowl this year with those receivers? What? You're only going to give us that? All right, good luck. See you later. We don't, we don't want to do the trade. So there's a lot of scenarios here where I could see how this this whole conversation got halted all of a sudden. Well, and that's always been the impediment when the deal wasn't done before the draft. Because remember, before the draft, when they're trying to work out a deal, and this is something that we pieced together and reported last month during our PFT Live hiatus, but there was a moment of exasperation where the 49ers weren't offering Ayuk what he wanted. My understanding is he was looking for $28 million a year, new money average on a long-term deal. And it was decided, go ahead and see if anybody else will give you that. And I think the 49ers were like, no, nobody's going to give him that. And they come back with five teams that will pay him what he wants. And then they just refuse any of the offers that were made pre-draft. Well, after the draft, there's nothing you can get by way of draft picks that are going to make you better this year. All the draft picks are because the draft this year has come and gone next year. So you need current players. And that's that's what this conversation has become Since Ayuk four weeks ago finally said, I would like to be traded. And he got permission to shop himself in a trade. And they had multiple teams come to the table. But he had great power there because they let him have that power. Where he had the veto. He had the thing that Hassan Reddick could have done. I ain't showing up for the physical. I'll just continue to stay here and not be happy and hold in. And, you know, the 49ers finally realized, you know, the 49ers... The 49ers like to play a little low-key hardball with guys. Yeah. And they know when to back off. And I think they're finally realizing, look, win the battle, lose the war. We need to back off here and keep this guy. Or what feels like it could be a culmination of multiple years, dating back to 2019, of trying to bang that door down and get our sixth Super Bowl championship. We're not going to get there. If we play hardball with Brandon Ayuk to the point that we have to trade him for assets that won't even make us better 
until next season at the earliest. And who knows if they'll even make us better because it's a crapshoot with these draft picks. Well, yeah, it's a crapshoot. And, and, you know, I know that team looks at it right now and they look at it and go, wait, we're in the Super Bowl window. They might do what you're talking about with the picks and the future and all that. If they looked at their team and went, hey, we're not ready. The time's not now. We're still a year or two away. That might be the thought process. And you're right about that. But they're not thinking that right now. They're thinking, like you just said, wait, we were there last year. We were in the championship game the year before that. We were in the championship game two years before that against the Rams. We were in the championship game two years before that against the Chiefs. We're knocking at the door. We're not just going to give away an all-pro receiver for nothing and then not have anything to fill the void you know, on that end there. So, yeah, I, I, I'll be interested to see where this goes. I really, I really will. Uh, you know, you get the sense now that, yeah, the 49ers are going, wait, the deal, the trade's not good enough, or we're not being, we're not able to find another trade partner, right, that you wrote an article about earlier this week and, uh, and somebody else to fill the void of Brandon Ayuk. And I, I got to think it's one of those two things that's really, you know, put a, put a damper on this thing. Okay, let's assume, and who knows at this point, let's assume that the – what, what what color is the smoke when they have a new pope? White smoke when the white smoke I think it rises is. Yes. from the, right. the Vatican, right? The, okay, the white smoke comes yep. from San Francisco today, and they have a deal with Brandon Ayuk. What do you think the deal is going to be? What do you think the new money average is going to be if they can work something out? Ooh. I'm going to say north of Amon Ra St. Brown, and somewhere between Amon Ross St. Brown and A.J. Brown. That, that's where I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I'm going to say it's right around there. $30 million, something like that. And we're on the same page. I think it'll be basically Amon Ross St. Brown with a little phony baloney back end Just to, that drives the average up gotcha. to A.J. Brown. Right, right. And, and also, and we know what the 49ers do, like with the guarantees. I'll say the first two years would be fully guaranteed. And then year three, they'll have until April 1. That's the date they love because it gives them all of the, even though it comes and goes fairly quickly, it's a lot of time in March to make decisions about whether or not you're going to keep a guy. Right. April 1 vesting of any injury guarantees into full guarantees for the third year of the deal. But the first two years fully guaranteed, they can get out of it after two years. And then they'll have until April 1 of the third year to decide whether or not to renew the vows and continue. And you you know, along the way. And hey, don't, I will not be a hundred percent flabbergasted and stunned if they would trade Debo Samuel. Now I've heard that Samuel's having a great camp as he's, you know, he's the guy with Ayuk not around and he's working hard and he's doing well, but I, I think Samuel won't be with the team after this year. I don't completely rule out the possibility of Samuel not being there this year, but we get back to the same problem. How do you replace him? Yes. If you move right. on from him this year, that's, that's you right. could just, you could trade Ayuk right now. But I remember thinking when this was kind of going off the rails for the 49ers, they could just accelerate this process of making Ayuk number one and move on from Samuel. But I've kind of talked my way back to the point where I was. I, I really would be stunned. Yeah. If, if, you know, all of a sudden it's Debo Samuel who gets traded to Pittsburgh and IU gets 32, 33, 34 million a year. Yeah, I I, I hear you. I, yeah, I don't I don't imagine anything happening there. Uh, I, I, you know, like we both have said, they're 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 in the Super Bowl window, and I think that the shelf life of this team is it is coming to an end, right? I mean, I, I don't know if you agree with that as either, or, but I would say. Yeah. Of that team. Of they'll the, reload. Yeah, they'll but reload. These guys, but this these feels guys like right here. Yet. Right. We're we're talking like it feels like hey, Kittle could be coming to an end here. I know he's still really damn good, but uh that situation, the two receivers, Trent Williams getting up there in age as we know, right? Fred Warner, right, is now purely in the the prime of his career right maybe at that point where maybe it starts to go down they got some guys like that Dre, Dre Greenlaw we know after the horrible Achilles tear so yeah I you know again this is a team that it's ready right now but it's certainly like on the horizon going hey we're gonna have to start retooling and, and refurbishing this team here pretty soon and the guy on the team that never gets discussed Christian McCaffrey he's 28 now yeah, which right. is is, is is getting up there as running backs go with a lot of wear and tear. Now he can withstand a lot of wear and tear, but how many more really solid high end years does he have left? The one guy who's going to be the face and voice and arm into the future is Brock Purdy. 
They're going to reconfigure that team around him systematically in the coming years. And yeah, for this group that has been prominent since 2019 when they got the Super Bowl 54 and we're up 10 points with seven minutes left. Sorry, 49ers fans. I know you don't want to have salt rubbed in the wound, but it's factual. That group, it feels like that's ending. And McCaffrey wasn't even around for that. Purdy wasn't even around for that. It just shows you, even when you feel like a team has kind of been held together for a five-year stretch, there's still a lot of changes that get made within that five-year stretch. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, you know, we, we've seen it. We've seen, you know, like, hey, the Houston Texans, like you talked about, the way they flipped their roster over in a few years. You know, the current the current NFL between the draft and free agency, if you do it right, yeah, you, you can make it happen in a hurry. And, yeah, even when we say a, a team has a shelf life, yeah, there's 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 always moving parts in the NFL. It's just not like baseball or basketball where you can go, eh, you know, 95% of our team's back every year. Eh, that's not the case. You might have your core starters, your core stars back every year, but there's always moving pieces to your point. Oh, massive change, massive turnover one year to the next and really on a five-year window. I think, we, I mean, when we, we did this exercise with the – the Chiefs and the 49ers, when they got together for the Super Bowl, 58, four years after 54, there were just a handful of guys, right. both teams, right. that started in that last Super Bowl where they got together. And we all think it's the same, mainly because it's Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, but there's a lot of differences. And there will be a lot of differences, not just over a four-year window, one year at a time, but it feels like the major renovation where they gut the bathrooms and they bring in the, the big roll-off box and they're filling up all the crap as they completely redo the house. It feels like that's coming for the 49ers, that this is the last year of the 49ers as we've kind of known them for the past five years. And some big names, multiple big names are going to be gone after this year. I think uh, yeah. we're on the same page. Yeah, I think there's definitely a possibility of that. I, I would agree with you totally there. All right, let's take a break. A big name in Cincinnati is still in the fold and had been at practice and now – he isn't at practice. What's going on with Jamar Chase, and where is this all heading? We'll look at that when PFT Live continues right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk. 